Our world is water. Had our ancestors seen our planet from space, they might have called it ocean instead of Earth. We are water, more than 70% by weight, and without drinking water, we would not last even a few days. Imagine a world without water, where you turn the tap and nothing comes out, or a world where we can't even go for a quick swim. But it's not just about survival. Water provides us with many utilities, such as carrying away a waste when we flush down our toilet, and with luxuries, such as being able to wash our cars. Water is an amazing substance. Did you know that Antarctica is the driest continent in the world, despite having ice sheets more than three kilometers thick? And Australia is the driest inhabited continent. We are more than 70% arid bushland and desert. We need water, but it's not always where we want it or when we want it. And even in Australia, sometimes there is too much of it. So just like we have budgets to tell us how much money we have and what our expenses are, our society needs water budgets. Water budgets tell us how much water we're going to need and how much is likely to be available. But it's not that easy. After all, we're talking about predicting the future. And given that we struggle to predict the weather just a few days in advance, how can we hope to predict water availability months, seasons, and years ahead? This brings us to water science and engineering, the science of the water cycle. Water can be studied on many levels. At the small scale, we have water flowing through tiny cracks and pores in the soil. Moving up, we have water catchments with areas of hundreds and thousands of square kilometers and include streams, vegetation, and bedrock. And at the scale of our entire planet, we have water in the oceans and the atmosphere, forming giant circulation patterns driving storms and cyclones, and affecting our climate. Predicting water availability, or even just measuring it, is incredibly difficult. For example, during a storm, the rainfall on one side of the street can be double the rainfall on the other side. And when it rains over a part of the Murray Darling, there is no precise way of telling how much will infiltrate and how much will run off into our streams and reservoirs. Why is all this important? If we cannot reliably predict water availability, we cannot, as a society, make good decisions about how much we can afford to use in our homes, for farming, and for the environment. And we cannot protect against hazards such as floods, which can wipe out entire communities and industries. Environmental science and engineering draws on many skills, from mathematics and physics, to field work, to computer programming. Being a researcher, you meet experts all the time, and there is a lot of teamwork. One day, you might be in the office writing a program to model a catchment. The next day, you might be in the field helping measure the water table. One day in New Zealand, we got dropped off a helicopter on top of Mount Cook, and we skied down, taking snow measurements to help predict the snow melt. It was incredible to stand on top of a mountain and not to see any foot tracks in the snow around you. So being a scientist is a lot of fun. People have this idea of scientists being these old bearded men, the crazy professors. Well, we do have those, but many, if not most, are young and creative people enjoying what they do. Many of my colleagues do a lot of sports, climbing, hiking, kayaking. Others enjoy the locations that science takes them to. So there is a lot of variety. What I really enjoy about being a water scientist and academic is the flexibility to decide what to work on, who to work with, and how to pursue this work. So there's a lot of flexibility, challenges, and rewards. So next time you're having a shower or pouring yourself a glass of water, keep in mind the amazing journey that water has taken to reach you and how scientists are learning about this most precious resource.